Make actively changing how students learn and how parents manage their children during the day. It also impacts how teachers create their lesson plans and run their classrooms, either in person or remotely or both. And to help us understand those changes, Doris Naquin, a first grade teacher at Briscoe Elementary School, joins us live this morning. Good morning. Hi, Doris. Good morning. Well, first off, how do you get set up to start teaching? Are there extra steps with facilitating Zoom and in-person instruction at the same time? There definitely is, and a lot of it has to do with if the kids are actually participating in that online activity or if they're independently doing something. So it's a matter of making sure that they have what they need to get going in the classroom before you ever even hop online with the virtual students. How challenging is it to conduct in-person learning and remote instruction at the same time, Doris? I mean, how do you keep students engaged if they can't be in the same room? Um, a lot of it has to do with still making sure that you're still letting them lead in their instruction. If they were in the classroom, they would be leading in it and it wouldn't just be you talking to them. So the biggest thing is remembering when you are virtually teaching is that it's still them that needs to be leading the lesson. They need to understand what they're learning. They need to be able to explain it and interact with it. It's not just sitting on the camera and talking back and forth, but really making sure that they're leading the lesson with you. And sometimes we understand there could be internet issues. Is there a homework policy if there are internet issues? So we're very fortunate that our district does provide hotspots for all the kids, but of course, like we know, internet goes down all the time. So we do record all of our lessons. They are put online for them to be able to get to at any point that they need them. And then especially in the lower grades, our students have actual work that they're writing on and whatnot as well. So even if they're not able to do, say, a digital activity online, they have the packet work to do at home. Do you think it's easier to do all virtual or all in-person instruction? Uh, I prefer all in-person instruction. <laughs> it's definitely easier to do yeah. one or the other. Um, the hybrid is definitely the most difficult to do, uh, but I definitely prefer the in-person instruction. And on that note, when would you feel comfortable having a full classroom full of students again? Um, honestly, I feel comfortable now. It's not necessarily the popular opinion, um, but our school has done a phenomenal job at upholding our safety routines. You know, every student has their temperature checked before they're allowed in the school. They have a mask on. They are sanitized before they come in. We have six feet apart um, and we've had no issues and it's been it's been going really well. That's good to hear. Again, thank you, Doris Naquin at Briscoe Elementary. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Doris. Good thank luck with the rest of the academic year. We will definitely be thinking about you and all those other hardworking instructors out there. That's right. It's been a very different year.